Hello, I'm Chris. This is J4 Farms. Uh, we got a small Borgo herd here in Northeast Arkansas. Uh, we started a little over a year ago, and uh, we've currently been at this location for about a year. And uh, come on, we'll show you a little bit about the goats. Part of our daily chores here is uh, making sure they got fresh water. Uh, we usually water every afternoon, and, uh, and I feed twice a day. I feed my billies and my young ones twice a day, mornings and evenings. And uh, my nannies are strictly on grass diet after weaning, and uh, until we get ready to breed them back again, and then we'll start feeding a little bit of grain. But uh, for video purposes, get them up here in a minute. I'll give them a little bit of grain. But, uh, I got this water tank here. I fill it up. And uh, where I got my water at now until I get electric to the barn. We do have electric fences down here, so we better stay off them. They will get you. But they are a cheap alternative to woven wire or something like that. And I actually like it better than woven wire. If you get the regular field fence, uh, these nannies and stuff, they got a small enough head, they can get their heads stuck. And that's a pain in the butt. When you come in, you've got a goat hung up all day. We've done been there and done that. And uh, also, flip, flip, leave that there. We're not done with it. Also, woven wire or sheep and goat fence. It's got the small four before wire. It's uh, it's better if you want it for goat. Uh, but the big problem with it, the other problem I don't like, is they like to rub on it and they will stretch it. They're constantly wanting to rub on it. Walk the fences and rub. As you can see, this gate right here is just a chain link gate that I've got because I don't have another gate right now. As you can see where it's all bowed out and it's even stretched where they where they rub on it all the time. And uh, that's why I built these heavy wood gates. They can rub on them or whatever they want to do. And they got cattle panels on them through the sixth spring. They're, they're not going anywhere. But uh, goats will tear stuff up. Let me uh, get across the fence here and give these nannies some water. Get me something to get across the fence with. Yeah. To the barn and uh, we'll get some feed. We'll feed these little ones first, these dull ones we uh, cut back to uh, add to our herd. And then we'll feed the nannies and then we'll feed the, <laughs> the, the billies here. 
All right, guys. This is the uh, part of the barn where we where I usually feed in the winter time. Just gonna see the double ones are in here. I feed right now. I'll tell you a little bit about these little double ones that we kept back. No, baby. This one here was a big single female. She's a was an April baby. She's out of one of our commercial dogs in our herd sire. And uh, she she was ten pounds. She's a she's a pretty one. Got good Roman nose, a lot of ear to her, and uh, growing out good. And then uh, these two right here, they were triplets. We had two Dolans and a and a uh, buckling out of a uh, out of our herd sire and a commercial doe we have. And uh, we retained the two two dolings and uh, got, sold the little billy. These two little red dolings here out of the red dapper doe we have, we bought her bread from another farm. She was bred to a red dapple buck. And uh, we retained those as well to add to our herd. And uh, we've got a young billy that we bought. I'll show you him in a minute. And we plan on breeding all these little girls too, and uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna make some good babies next spring or next fall when they're big enough. One. We're here at the <coughs> nanny goat pasture that I got them in. Do you want in there, boo? We'll give them some feed. I could go through gates, but it's a lot easier just to take your chances getting across the lake of fence. And I have done some dance moves getting over it. As you can see, they don't get a lot of feed right now, and they go nuts over it. I'll even knock it down. Uh, we'll start with this little doe on the end. She had the big single uh, little doe one I showed you in the barn. And I hope this year she has twins. This next kidney. Uh, of course the dapple had the two reds. Those are both smaller frame goats, but they had really, they threw really good babies. And, uh, this old girl here, she had, she's done selling, but she had a really big single this year. And he weighed like 14 pounds when he was born. Had a and uh, she's not got a lot of uh, chest width and stuff to her, but she's got good bone on her and good straight back. And she, uh, she throws a really good baby. And uh, this one right here is Glitter. She's a big baby. No. And uh, we are fixed. We're about a month away from putting our buck in with all these girls. But this one right here, she's a 50 percenter. We're going to take her to another farm and have her bred by another buck. Just, uh, I don't know if we get any video of that or not, but if we can, we'll try. But uh, that's pretty much our nannies right now. And the young ones that we got saved back for next year. And uh, I'll, sh I'll show you our bucks and uh, talk, talk a little bit about them. One. Guys, we'll take our chances and get across here with our, with our bucks. And uh, see if we can do it without knocking the feed bucket off the string and making me shock myself. Uh, this little guy here is 100%. And this big guy here is a hundred percenter. This one here is the son of a power surge. Uh, we call him Grover. He's about a two and a half year old now. And uh, all, all those little dull ones minus the red ones are his kids. And uh, they, they did really good. And this this one here, we're going to breed all those all of his kids and the two little red dull ones to this one next year. He's only about five, six months old, about the same age as the doe, the doe wings are. 
and uh, he's 100 percent he's a son out of the uh, habanero and uh, we're really excited to see what he turns into he's got a pretty good chest on him and uh, good roman nose and some ear <laughs> as you can see he's a little bucky already guys i'll tell you a little bit about the barn here this is a pen i built for weaning our little our doe wings and our, our little bucklings in when we pull them off the nannies we put them in this pen for i don't we'll leave them in there and the nanny their mamas can see them and they can see their mamas and they're not, they're not as stressed if you just take them all the way away they do do some crying but they get over it pretty quick but uh, there's another pen out here that we house our billy both our billies up now in the winter time there's a door where they can get in the barn also in the winter when we're feeding hay and out of the out of the snow or the rain or whatever. Let's go inside and I'll show you. Guys, this is a hay feeder that I built. It's about eight foot long, roughly four foot wide. Got four by four wheels of panels in it. They can get at it from either side. Uh, these panels, they, they can't waste as much hay. I, I, you can go smaller on these, but this works pretty good for me. And uh, I just I loaded up with square bells and uh, they do the rest. And, uh, we got our mineral and our baking soda, salt licks on here. We try to repurpose a lot of stuff, save money all we can. And so uh, we use a lot of pallets. They work good for making stalls or or like this. We got our hay there, and I got a gate there on the end. I get into it. This is our hay left over from last year. This right here is, uh, is our belly goat skull. It is on the north side of the barn, so if it's blowing wind or snow or rain, whatever, it's really cold. I do shut that door in the evenings at night to keep the wind out and uh, make it a little nicer for them. We bed it up real good. They got their hay, the water, everything they need right there in the winter. And then they run space outside. This right here is the same deal. We repurposed pallets. I built four stalls. Really, the only thing I have in them is two by fours and some screws, two by four frame, and uh, pallets for the walls. These are about 10 foot, 10 foot out from the wall, about eight foot wide. We kitted out all of our babies in these stalls this winter or this early spring. We had some pretty cold nights a couple times and. Uh, they did just fine in here. We uh, usually like to keep them up with their mamas for minimum of two, two days, three days. Make sure they get up and going real good and sucking good before we turn them out. And we, we might even just let them out for the day. Like I'll turn them out in the mornings before I go to work and in the evenings I might walk them back up with their mama again. But, uh, and we might do that for a week. But, uh, just depends on the kids and the mom and our base with them. This right here, I used to use it to, uh, I put it in the back of my truck and I'd use it to haul our goats. Well, I've repurposed it and made a creek feeder out of it. I built a trough in here and I got some old hand rail and it works perfect for creek feeding these uh, dolling and buckling. They can go right in here. Their mamas can't get in there and get to feed and they can get all they want and get that weight going. It works perfect. That's pretty much the barn goes. I mean, you guys saw the feeder and we'll go when I was feeding the little dough ones. We'll go out here and I'll talk about some uh, some huts that I built. And they're out of repurposed pallets and stuff too. They work great. Guys, these are goat huts. I built three of these. We've got our place split up into four pastures. We rotate our, our nannies about every 14, 15 days. And uh, I built these huts out of reclaimed pallets, a few two by fours. And uh, that's really the old money I got in two by fours and the metal on top. And they work perfect as anybody that's been around goats knows that they hate to get wet so so these are just a little comfort adder to them uh, like i say in the winter time they're in the barn or i keep them in the pasture with the barn 
of where I feed all my hay and I just keep them there all winter. But the spring and summer we're rotating them, keep them moving. And uh, this gives them a place to get in and out of the weather. And this is Margo. She is our livestock guardian dog. She is a great Pyrenees. Uh, they're naturally pretty protective. She's really gentle. She's great around kids. She loves hanging out with the goats. Uh, and we're really proud to have her. She's also a very big love bug, aren't you, Margo? Alright guys, that was pretty much a tour of our little farm here. Uh, if you like this video, just hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll try to get some more videos up.